Hey fellow YouTubers, um, this is my first YouTube video, so hopefully um, this is beneficial for all the folks out there that are wondering what level of emulation can you do on a Fire TV, or can you even do emulation on a Fire TV stick to be exact? And the short answer is, um, for a device that costs between 20 to $40, depending on whether or not you catch it on sale, um, you can actually emulate 16-bit systems quite almost perfectly. Um, and, and in that 20 to $40 worth of investment, you're also getting a little device that has Bluetooth built in, has Wi-Fi built in, can do Netflix. Of course, you can access your Amazon content. You could install Kodi. And least but not, you know, leastly, you can also install um, things like RetroArch to give you emulation. So, so here's my setup. I've got um, I've got my Fire TV set up right now, um, connected to obviously my TV here, and I've also got an 8-bit Duo controller. So, if you guys have not seen these before, um, I highly recommend if you're a retro gamer and you like um, emulating Super Nintendo or earlier. Um, it's an excellent controller. It's a Bluetooth controller that you can essentially connect to your Fire TV stick. So, just to show you guys, I'm gonna go ahead and um, I'm gonna go ahead and reboot this system because there's been a lot of information out there on the web as to whether or not um, you can connect an 8-bit duo controller to the fire stick short answer is yes and it's a little bit finicky but once you get it to work um, not only can you connect it um, you can connect it consistently and you don't have to go back and remap it every single time i know there's been some reports out on the interwebs that you would have to reconnect the controller um, meaning you would have to rebind it in the in the settings um, if, if you wanted to use this controller. While I did experience that, um, there is a trick to doing it. I mean, at least the trick for me was to make sure that I unbinded it to any other previously binded um, systems. And once I've done that and I connect it to the um, Fire Stick, it works perfectly. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. So this is booting up. Um, it should boot up into um, an additional front end You'll see this in a minute. It'll come up. Here we go. This is called Firestarter. I'm going to drop um, links to this in the description if you guys are interested. But what it is, it quickly, it's it's a home screen launcher that will enable you to get to um, other, you know, other applications you may have installed. So just as an FYI to everyone watching this, um, the Fire Stick is Android-based. Um, and it does not block you from installing from unknown sources. Hence, you can install things like ES File Explorer, RetroArch, and Kodi. So anyway, I've booted up. Um, here is my 8-bit duo. I'm going to go ahead and press Start for about two seconds on my controller here, and it should automatically bind um, to the Fire TV. Let's see if it works. So move, move. There you go. Automatically bind it right away and i've also rebooted several times hit the start button um for two seconds and it will bind so um hurrah in the sense that you know this is quick and easy so anyway let's hop into retroarch um so i'm gonna go ahead and hit b on the controller actually a on the controller now what i've got running here is the latest um, version of RetroArch um, nightly. So um, here we are. Um, what I've done here, I've configured this to show the FPS on the top screen. So for all you guys that are interested in emulation, one of the questions that I've always had is, um, that's great, you're showing that it can run the, the game, but at what FPS are you getting on the particular hardware? So um, as you see, um, I've got I've got uh, 60 frames per second up on the screen, but that's just the menu. So let's go ahead and load something. So I'm going to move over to the to the right here, and here we have Yoshi's Island. So for those of you um, that are not too familiar with this game, um, this game is problematic on a lot of older hardware because it uses a SuperFX chip, 
um, that was, you know, that was um, basically installed in the original cartridge for additional computing power. So that said, here we are. So I've, I've got uh, Yoshi's Island here. I've got Pocket SNES as the emulator. So um, again, for those of you that don't know much about RetroArch, um, it will allow you to um, download multiple emulation backends, if you will, and run them for any particular ROM. So here we have um, Yoshi's Island configured to run on Pocket SNES, which is really probably the best, one of the best emulation backends for anything that runs a SuperFX chip. So any of those, you know, things like um, Yoshi's Island or, um, you know, there's a few other games out there. It slips to me at the moment, but really good, good emulation backend. Next here for Super Mario All-Star, Super Mario World, another Super Nintendo classic. Um, we've got this configured to run on the SNES 9X Next backend. And, and really between these two backends, um, you, you really can really kind of emulate everything on the Super Nintendo front. So, okay, let's let's go. Let's, let's launch Yoshi's Island and let's see what kind of frames per second we're going to get out of that. So you noticed, first of all, on the upper left, if you catch that quickly, um, it actually detected the 8-bit Duo controller. So I'm going to click Run. I'm going to launch this. And notice, frames per second is at 60. So I'm going to go through a board real quick, just to show you that that frames per second will hold at 60 on the Amazon Fire Stick. Notice there's no type of slowdown here. This is just fluid. Again, a lot of lower end systems have trouble um, running these Super FX based games. But, you know, it works perfectly here. So I'm going to stop this video in a few minutes here. Um, I think the point has been made that you can pretty much run any Super Nintendo game on the Fire Stick as a quick, cheap, effective way to do some retro gaming. So let me exit out of this. There we go, I'm back to the menu. So there, there's a lot of configuring you can do with RetroArch. Um, I'm not gonna go into that in this video. Um, if, if, you, if, if you were looking just a few minutes ago at what I had up on the screen, um, you would have seen that I had, a, had an overlay that kind of gave that retro feeling and added scan lines and whatnot. So even with those scan lines overlay, um, running at a four by, four by three aspect ratio, 60 frames per second um, runs phenomenal. Um, you know, what else can I say? I mean, I think I think in summary here, I would say that, you know, I've tried a lot of devices, right? I've got um, a Raspberry Pi, um, first generation. I've got a second. I've got a high-end NVIDIA Shield. Um, all in all, if you're looking for the smallest footprint to run 16-bit games, um, this is it. You know, um, again, you can catch the Fire Stick for twenty to forty dollars. Um, you know, you pair that with a um, 8-bit 8-bit Do SNES 30 or SFC 30 controller. Um, I'm glad to say that this thing works perfectly. Um, with anything, you've got to do a little bit of tinkering out of the box, but um, once you have that up and running, um, this works. So I've also tested 
Genesis ROMs, I've tested um, NES ROMs, of course, this video I've tested um, Super Nintendo, um, I've not yet tested um, N64, but, you know, for me, you know, retro for me is, is, is really Super Nintendo 16-bit games and below. So, to that end, um, I hope this helps someone. If you have questions, feel free um, to leave comments in the video, video, and I'll try to get back to you. Thanks, everyone. Bye.